Hello everyone, today I wanna to talk to you about recording solutions and playback solutions. And you might have something like this, the Blackmagic HyperDeck or the AJA Kai Pro. And it's something I've used in the path, both of, the, both of those solutions. And they're really great if you just need something to crash record and then play it back. But you might need something that has more options. So you need more efficiency and control. And that's why I think On The Air Video Express and Movie Recorder Express might be a better option because there's a lot more features that they can do. And so why I can talk about those is because we're still gonna be using things like the AJA IO X3 or the Ultra Studio 4K, which is what I'm using today. And so what are the options? So let's talk about Movie Recorder Express. We have something like scheduling. So you can take in these sources and you can set up the times to record and you can even create repeating events to allow those to record automatically. We also support edit while ingest. So Movie Recorder or Movie Recorder Express records to your storage and your editor will take those growing files and see those automatically grow in their timeline. And that's really helpful if they have a short turnaround time to, break, uh, to create a finished product. We also have naming tokens as part of your recording file name. So you take the recording name, you take the date and a take and a counter. And so you can automatically build those names. We can also go one step further. And so in this example, I'm gonna use year, month, and day. I'm gonna put recording name and time, and that's actually gonna build subfolders in your storage. So that's really a good way to keep your storage organized automatically with Movie Recorder. And with Movie Recorder Express, we can support a custom destination. So you can choose MOV or MP4, and you can choose where that's going to your storage. And then with the full version of Movie Recorder, we can have multi-destination. So MP4, you can have MLV, and we even have MXF as well. And you can choose where that one input is being recorded to multiple times. Movie Recorder also supports external audio. It has router control, Apple scripting, closed captioning, metadata, and a lot more support built into it. And so that's really helpful for all those tools. And so make sure you check out the comparison between Movie Recorder and Movie Recorder Express on our website. So let's talk about playback. We can have on the air Video Express and Movie Recorder Express on the same Mac. And so like I said, I'm using that Ultra Studio 4K, I'm recording and I'm playing back on a single Mac. And so that's really helpful when you're doing this to know that you can have both of those things going on, two different apps, but they're gonna work really well together. And so on the air Video Express has some other features. We have clip end behavior. So when a clip ends, you can set it to hold, stop, skip to the next clip or loop. And you also have audio gain. So you can take a certain clip and adjust its audio level and it won't impact the rest of the clips that you have. You can also split the media item if you want, and then you can do non-destructive editing. So you can adjust in and out points, but it's not gonna change the original file. And with the full version of on-air video, you get a lot more like scheduling, you can add closed caption support, you can add dynamic graphics overlay, and there's a lot more features within that. So make sure, like I said, you can compare Movie Recorder and Movie Recorder Express and on-air video and on-air video express right on our website. And you'll see how those stack up. And so let's talk about how those are used in a real application. Well, you're looking at it. Everything we're doing here is being recorded with Movie Recorder Express and the video clips I'm showing you are on the Air Video Express playing it out. And so let's take a look at my setup. Here we have the Blackmagic Studio camera. It's going to my ATEM and that output is feeding into Ultra Studio. And I'm getting that through Thunderbolt to my Mac and I'm recording it with Movie Recorder. And then look at playback, again, same Ultra Studio, same cable, output into the ATEM. Now, if we look at the entire picture, we can see that setup of how everything is working together. And I'm actually going to add one more output, SDI converted to HDMI into my ATEM. Now, why I'm doing that is I wanna show a little bit more complicated workflow. That way you can see the more complex version and scale it back as you need. So I'm gonna show you how to run an animation through On The Air Video Express, and you can key that over into your ATEM. So you can use that for transitions. So let's take a look how, how that is done. So we're looking at my On The Air Video Express and my ATEM software, 
And so I'm going to take this, it's in queue mode, have that queued, and I've already put that into my downstream here, it's coming in. And so I'm gonna take you here, graphic fill, graphic key is what I've labeled the sources. I will turn my downstream keyer on, as you see, and I'm going to play that file. Perfect. So we know that worked. And if you saw, it actually just queued the next clip. And that's because in our preferences, we have auto queue turned on. And so that means after the clip is done playing, two seconds later, it's going to queue the next clip. So that's really helpful if you want to make sure it's queuing as you need. So when you're done with the clip, it's already ready with the next one. Now let's do that one more time. I have the downstream keyer on. I'm going to play my next video. Now I'm on camera. So that was really easy. Ran the DSR, turned the downstream keyer on, ran the video, and I cut underneath it. But there are a lot easier ways to do that because we can use the HyperDeck emulation to trigger the video. So let's take a look how we set that up. Make sure you get the IP address of the machine on your video is on. Go to preferences, triggers, external triggers, and have HyperDeck emulation selected. And you can choose which playlist to publish because you can have the frontmost playlist or the playing playlist be the active one, or you can custom assign one. Now, a good pro tip here is you can use folder-based playlists with On Air Video Express. That means you have a watch folder and whatever files go into that, whatever media goes in there, will automatically show or be removed from that playlist. So that's great because now editors can be adding files remotely and your director or your TD is going to see that content automatically show up. So that's a really good method to make it a lot simpler. So I'm going to stick with the transitions. Let's go to the gear in the ATEM software. Go to my HyperDeck. I'm going to get rid of that and add my IP address. You see, I've already assigned the input and connect. Now I have auto roll on. And what auto roll is going to do, as soon as that source is on air, it's going to start rolling that video automatically for you. And we have an offset here, so that gives time for the command from the ATEM to tell on your video to cue that clip and start playing. So I'm going to take that offset and let's do three frames. Okay, now if I look at media players, you see HyperDeck, that's actually on your video right there. So I'm going to turn on that key and you're going to see it starts playing. Okay, so you just saw I did the downstream keyer, it automatically rolled and I cut to camera. But let's make it a little bit more interesting by making this into a macro. So that means I'm going to select the, uh, select the clip I want to roll for the transition. I'm then going to cut underneath that animation and then I'm going to take the downstream keyer off air all in one button press. So let's see how to set that up. So let's go to macros. And I'm going to click this add to record. I'm going to call it wipe. Now I'm going to select an animation here. And that tells the macro that that is the clip I want to use. And just like before with the offset, I'm going to add a slight pause. And that pause is going to give time for on the air video to cue the clip. So add pause. Now we're going to turn the downstream keyer, and that's going to run the animation. Again, we do want to do a cut next, but we want to add a pause to give time for the animation to be covering the screen. So one second, add pause, cut, and we're going to add another pause. And why we're doing that is because we want to give time before taking the key or off screen again. We don't want to do it right away. So add pause and take the downstream keyer off. Stop recording. Now, if I've set this up correctly, I'm gonna preview camera one, and I'm gonna hit my macro six button, and you should see me. Perfect. There it is. That's how you set up a macro. The good news is there's a lot more tutorials online on the ATEM and setting up animations, macros, hyperdeck, and the good news is all those work with on-the-air video 
because as far as the ATEM knows, it is a hybrid deck. And so that's a great way to use the on-the-air video because it looks the same exact way to the ATEM. And so there's a lot more features you can use with on-the-air video because you can have multiple instances on one computer. And for Movie Recorder Express, you can have multiple inputs. So you can really turn your Mac into a really big, important part of your production workflow. So thank you for watching. Make sure to check out softron.tv so you can see all the features of all of our products and see how they really compare. Thanks for watching.